13 Sentinels Aegis Rim is the latest game developed by Vanillaware. While this development studio isn't as big or as well known as many others out there, they do have a pretty good track record such as with the critically acclaimed Odin Sphere and Dragon's Crown. And this is probably the first thing that blew me away about 13 Sentinels, that is the unique, absolutely stunning visuals that are common with these other Vanillaware titles. However, the one thing that sold me on this game was its nomination for Best Narrative at the Game Awards and the fact that it's of the sci-fi genre. To put simply, 13 Sentinels is absolutely, without a doubt, worthy of that nomination. The story is not only brilliant, but the way in which it's told is so unique and perfect that I'm a little surprised that it didn't take out top prize for the category. If you're into deep, complex stories with some fun strategic combat and RPG mechanics, then add 13 Sentinels to your must playlist. Before we begin, if you liked this review, it would help me out a lot if you hit like and sub for loads more RPG content. Alright, let's get into it. 13 Sentinels has a very unique gameplay structure to it and this is probably worth mentioning before anything else. The game is split into three sections. Destruction, which is the battle system. Remembrance, which is the story. And Analysis, which is your, well, only way you'll be able to follow this convoluted story. You will constantly be switching between these three modes at your own leisure and this freedom was something that I loved about 13 Sentinels. So, as the game is structured into three sections, so too will be the case with this review. We'll start with the best part of 13 Sentinels, Remembrance Mode. As I said before, this story certainly deserves its Game Awards nomination. It is sensational. If you're into complex narratives with loads of twists, turns and mind-blowing revelations, then few games will ever match this. These days, I rarely find games that make me stop and think about it while I'm not playing. You know, it kind of reminds me of those daydreams I used to have to try to get my head around the amazing Xenogears narrative. Basically, we have a sci-fi plot focusing on time travel and giant robots called Sentinels. The story revolves around 13 characters from different time periods learning how and why they've been chosen as Sentinel pilots destined to save the world from the Kaiju invasion. The Kaiju are also giant robots. This is a very giant robot game. In Remembrance Mode, you'll constantly be switching through all 13 characters as their stories are revealed one chapter at a time. These characters are all important to the plot and all directly intertwined with so much happening at all times and this is what makes it particularly hard to follow. This is definitely not one of those kick your feet up while you scroll on your phone, drink beer and eat Cheetos kind of games. To start with, we have a time travel focused plot. There is a lot of jumping around and following each character's events and keeping track of when something happened and if previously witnessed events have occurred yet is very confusing. On top of that, we have a huge cast of characters all with foreign names who are sometimes referred to as their first names and sometimes their last names which made me feel like I had to remember double the amount of characters. Initially, this is a bit of an overload but that's where the brilliant analysis mode comes in and the way everything comes together in the end is just incredible and what makes 13 Sentinels such an amazing experience. Finally, I finally found you. Now it's a drama. Late night TV gets weird. I've been looking for you for so long. Please help me, Shu Amiguchi. <gasps> You're the only one I can turn to, Shukun. When you pick a character, you'll be playing through a short chapter of their narrative before returning back to the mode selection screen. Each of these chapters is told in a format that resembles an interactive novel. You control your chosen character within dozens of absolutely stunning environments and interact with other characters in that setting. Each chapter is usually linear, but you occasionally have the option to choose the order in which narrative path you view first. Also worth mentioning is that every conversation is fully voice acted and these voice actors do an outstanding job in bringing these characters to life. Interacting with others is often done through the Thought Cloud system. When a certain topic comes up in conversation, it'll be saved to the character's Thought Cloud. This not only provides keywords to use to progress future conversations, but it's also a great way to remind yourself what the character has recently gone through. There is a lot of switching between the different characters' points of views, and I always jump straight into the Thought Cloud as soon as I recommenced with a character that I hadn't controlled in a while. The true genius of this excellent story is the way that it's revealed. While all of the events and 
when the ending will end up being identical for everyone, the order in which events are revealed will entirely depend on which characters you choose and when. For instance, one gamer may witness a crucial scene for Juro, but with little understanding of some of the things being referred to in a particular conversation. Meanwhile, another gamer may have progressed a little bit further as Iori, and therefore will have learnt more of her story and the revelations that came with it and will therefore react much differently to that same Juro scene. It's hard to explain how well this actually works. With that said, there are various narrative locks that prevent certain story progression from taking place. For instance, you may need to have seen a certain event with one character before you can proceed with another character's narrative. This just basically means that you can't complete 100% of one character's story and then move on to the next. These locks are expertly placed and really ensure that you're not going to spoil the game for yourself. An example of this is with Renya's story. There are loads of critical story reveals later in his narrative that would give away too much important information if you viewed them early on. However, these narrative locks make it so that his story has to be viewed later in the game, and rightfully so. I was sent here by the future you to the year 2089. The future me? She asked me to find you on Sumire Bridge 16 years prior and tell you about our battles. We'll defeat them this time for sure. The next major system is analysis, and the sole purpose of this section is to help the player follow this confusing story. To start with, we can see each character's timeline from start to finish. Every event that you have witnessed at that point will be placed in order with a brief summary of what happened in that scene and who was present for that event. You can also choose to review each event, which certainly helped remind me of some of the events that I didn't quite understand the first time around. The second section here is the mystery files, and this acts as a glossary of characters and other terms. These these files are automatically updated according to the information revealed in the main story, and I found myself turning to these after watching every single event unfold. This is crucial in being able to follow the paths of every character. For such a complicated story, 13 Sentinels does an outstanding job in providing the player with the tools to help follow what's going on. My Sentinel looks pretty skinny compared to you guys. Don't tell me I got stuck with a wimpy one. Its shoulder gyros can carry up to 600 tons, so it can fly, but it's about a quarter of the weight of a third gen. But hey, that's some crazy mobility, Yuki-chan. Besides, it's got a lot of power in those legs, right? The final section is Destruction, which acts as the game's battle system. The setting for these battles is a final confrontation against the Kaiju after all of the characters have come together as Sentinel pilots. Everything that you've witnessed in Remembrance Mode takes place prior to Destruction Mode, and I really enjoy jumping back and forth between story and combat at my own pace. I think the best way to describe this combat is a mix between a real-time strategy and a tower defense game. To put it simply, for each wave of enemies, you'll need to select 6 of the 13 pilots to defend defend your tower and defeat all of the invading kaiju on the map. These kaiju will slowly advance on you from all different angles and the core strategy comes in deciding how to position your sentinels and when to use your offensive, defensive and supportive abilities. The 13 pilots are split between four different classes of sentinels, each having their own abilities, strengths and weaknesses, so selecting a good mix from all of these classes is crucial to success. The game also provides score bonuses to encourage the use of all characters rather than simply sticking to the same six for every fight. To be honest, it took a while for this combat system to click with me, but once it did, I found a lot of enjoyment in it. I did have a couple of issues, however, the first being that it's too easy. I received an S rank in just about every wave, and this was on the hardest difficulty. It does get a little more challenging at the end, but I still managed to roll through every encounter without ever having to grind. The second issue is the visual style of this combat system, which is completely different to the stunning presentation of Remembrance Mode. I guess this style does help distinguish friend from foe a little easier, but I still feel that there was a lot of wasted potential here. I mean, actually seeing these giant sentinels and kaiju fighting each other in the visual style of the rest of the game would have been amazing. The RPG mechanics come into play by spending your meta chips earned through previous battles. Each Sentinel has several class-based abilities to choose from, with only six being able to be equipped at a time. These abilities can then be leveled up further to increase in power. Later in the game, meta chips can also be spent on upgrading the stats of the Sentinel, but honestly, these upgrades seemed insignificant for the cost, and I felt that this feature is more suited to the extra post-game missions. The only other real upgrade feature is the pilot skills that are automatically learnt through leveling up. 
For example, at level 5, A learns the motorcyclist skill that increases his move speed when not piloting a sentinel. Due to the automatic nature of these skills, I never really put them into consideration when selecting my sentinels for battle. It would have been nice if there was an option or some kind of skill tree here so that I could further personalize my team. For what the combat is, these upgrade mechanics work well enough, but some additional depth is something that could have been taken a step further. Wow, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim is one hell of a ride. I am so glad that this one was nominated for Best Narrative, else I probably wouldn't have been so eager to play it. The number one reason to jump into 13 Sentinels is for the gripping sci-fi story. It's full of twists and turns with countless mind-blowing moments. And while the story's destination will be the same for everyone, the journey will be completely different and change the way different gamers react to different events. For this, 13 Sentinels is truly commendable. In true Vanillaware style, the visuals are also stunning. It's just a shame that the same can't be said about the different visual direction of the combat, which, while still a lot of fun, could have been taken a step further. But the combat is not the reason you'll be playing 13 Sentinels for. It's for the story, so if you're into complex sci-fi narratives, then look no further. What did you think of 13 Sentinels? Let me know in the comments. This was Hellfire RPGs, thanks for watching. If you liked this, hit like and sub for more RPG content. Also, come say hi on Twitter or Facebook. See you next time.